All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of the Addictively Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, James, and tonight I have Sam, and I've met Sam through the wonderful world of TikTok. Um, I've seen him on TikTok, and I've, we're all part of this recovery community, and like people are always sharing their recovery stuff, and and uh, I got in touch, uh, Sam got in touch with me about coming on the podcast, so Sam, welcome to the podcast, and uh, yeah, tell everybody about yourself. Yeah, so good evening, everyone. Yeah, so my name's Sam, and I'm an addict, um, recovering addict, shall I say, but I am always will be an addict. Um, so a bit about me, my started using when I was probably early teens, um, just socially with mates, hanging about, doing what boys do, in, in and out of trouble all the time. And, um, you know, my using was good at the very beginning um well i say it was good it wasn't destructive um it was just a social thing uh just probably alcohol then the bit of cannabis yeah, here and say, then i was gonna say what were you using when you started like what were the so it was, it was alcohol and then some weed, yeah maybe. And, and some cannabis and that was it and but it was mostly kind of alcohol parties um and yeah so it that was great and all through kind of my teenage years i was playing football i got to a very high standard of football and i was playing literally i was training three or four times a week playing sometimes twice a week and i hit the age of 18 and i snapped my cruciate ligament in my knee and um yeah it can like broke me you know i didn't know nothing else and I didn't know how to do life like i dropped out of school because football was my main focus and um yeah it was just uh i didn't know how to do life and deal with life on life terms um so i really kind of struggled with that and um so i started kind of hitting the drink a bit harder and i was just searching for something to fill that void my mental health went completely downhill and I was constantly chasing something. If I couldn't have one thing, I wanted another. And um, I then started kind of found cocaine, very kind of, again, social thing. I was just dabbling in and out maybe every other weekend or every weekend when I went out, just the one. And then um, I went for a very traumatic um, situation when I was 21. Uh, I was falsely accused of something I didn't do and uh, it completely broke me and not only did it affect me it affected my family so then that affected my relationship on my, my family because I kind of it was my it, I took all the blame even though I'd done nothing wrong and it was so hard and I just didn't know didn't know where to turn and so then I started kind of hitting the cocaine even more and I kind of found it and I was like, yeah, this is it. I found, I've cracked it. If I take cocaine, I can smash life. And that was how, you know, it just, it just filled and made me whole again. And, um, yeah, it was, um, it was very, it was so hard. I just hated life and I didn't want a beer anymore, but just taking that cocaine just kind of took the edge off it and made me, I got, I got through life with it. And, after six seven years of absolutely smashing the hell of it out of it i was still i was functional you know i still went to work still went away about my daily life but just using cocaine all the time and um back end of 2022 i lost everything burnt all my bridge with my family i was like i was a lying cheating thieving stealing addict you know i went to any lengths to get the drugs in the end of my using you know it didn't matter who you were you know like i've done some awful things and one of the most awful things is when i say i go to any lengths i see an old couple sitting in their front room window and um i was driving past i stopped the car 
and I went and kicked the door in, went in, asked for their wallet and their purse, and you know, but I that was desperation, you know, because I could not live life without cocaine and I went to any lengths to get it. So now what I do now, I go to any lengths for my recovery. So if I if there's only a meeting and it's an hour away, I will drive to that meeting if I need it. You know, I still have to treat my recovery exactly the same as I used to treat active addiction. Um, so, yeah, I, in the back end of my using, I lost everything, like I said. Um, burnt all bridges with my family, lost all my friends, lost my partner. Um, I lost my job, lost my license and lost my home. And I ended up on the, I was on the streets. No one wanted me because... I was just constantly using drugs. I was a danger. And I was in and out of, like, I've been in prison, uh, constantly being nicked for just stupid stuff. And it got to a point and I was just like, can I do this? Like, do I want it anymore? And my parents, like, final straw was they tried putting me, tried kind of edging me into meetings. And I was going there and I was still using, like, going into the meeting, coming out halfway through using, meeting my dealer outside. Like, and I was just like, oh, this is what I like. It's just a load of rubbish. Like, I'm not interested. And um, it just it just got worse and worse. And I then I was at a warrant out for my arrest and I was running away from the police. And I was just like, I never, I just thought I was untouchable. You know, no one could touch me and I could do what I wanted. And, um, yeah it just didn't end well I ended up back in inside and I was like right enough's enough and like I got offered a job and I was like right if I can get a job I can now fund my addiction and then I can stop nicking off other people and I was like yeah that's a great idea right perfect not thinking I, I'm on the streets you know I don't have a roof over my head I can't even put food in front of me not that I want it anyway but and then someone said to me right it's either a house or a job. What do you want? And I was like, it's a job. Like, set in stone. And I was in no fit state to even get in work. Like, I was skin and bone. I and Well, I don't even have a roof over my head, so I, my hygiene was completely out the window. And um, so, yeah, after a bit of kind of professional help, shall I say, they managed to steer me into a recovery house and um, that's what I done. And you know, recovery was great at first. I absolutely, I was absolutely buzzing because I couldn't, I couldn't stop using for about an hour, like half hour. And you know, to get a day clean, that was just like an absolute miracle. And I was absolutely loving recovery in my early days. And I was in a house where using wasn't. It wasn't, you couldn't use basically inside the house, but you could use outside as long as you didn't come back too bad. So it, for me, I wasn't using. So when people used to come in, I'll be like, oh, look at the state of you. And it was good to see. It was good to see because I'd be like, that's what I used to be like. But on a Friday, staff used to go home for the weekend and they used to just, like, it was basically, Door shuts at 5.30, that's it, party time. Like, everyone's drinking in the house, everyone's using. And I used then I started to isolate myself because I didn't want to use. But I was like, to the, it was getting to the point where I was like, I'm isolating and I'm just sitting in my own head. And that's a very, that's very dangerous territory for me because I can't sit with my own feelings. Even now, I still struggle. And, um, but yeah, I kind of stuck with it and I stuck with it. And you know, one day I just thought I hit that fuck it button and that was me out the door. And I lost that house. Like I got kicked out for really like, using in the house. I was drinking in the camera, dancing around the conservatory, like off my nut. And I was just like, <sighs> what, what, how have I ended up back in again? But wait, like, did any of the other yeah. people in the house get kicked out? Cause they, they seem to be the ones that were yeah. starting it to begin with, and you kind of just well because I was blatant. I was blatantly obvious because I was doing it in front of a camera, 
Um, oh, so they just, so they just kind of well, did it. Yeah. Hit it's, it. No, yeah, but there was one lad he was dealing in there, and they found baggies in his room, grinders, but there was no evidence of weed. So they didn't couldn't kick him out because there was no evidence of drugs. Like, but he's got paraphernalia. So yeah, it was a, yeah. it's just corrupt, That's basically. That's yeah. Funny. And even my key worker at the time, she was like, "You've been out done here. Like, someone's you've upset someone, and they don't like you. So it's just an easy way for, for them to get you out." And I was like, you know, it is what it is. And I think I needed it because I wasn't taking recovery seriously. I just thought it was a lot easier than it was. And I am grateful for that relapse. And I, the next day I went to a Narcotics Anonymous convention, which was in our local area. Um, mm-hmm. And my key worker was there and she was like, right, get yourself there. And I was like, I can't get back. I can't go there. Like, I was still off my nut. And I'm so grateful because I'm still clean to this day. And that's nine, I think, 280 days today. So just over nine months. And for someone that over a year ago was street homeless, had nothing, no family, no friends, no home, no partner, spin it around a year, I've now got a lovely partner who's also in recovery. Um, Got all my family back in my life. I've got a roof over my head. I'm going on a holiday in June. You know, I've got all these wonderful things. But I tell you, it hasn't been easy. You know, I've had to put in a lot of hard work. And I've had to not only stop, it's not just about stopping the drugs. I've had to change my attitude. I've had to change my thinking. I've had to change my behavior. Because I can stop taking drugs and I can still be an absolute arsehole. You know, (laughs) so I've had to kind of take a real good look at myself and put in the work where where required and um but yeah recovery is oh, i wish i found it years ago because my life is an absolute dream and i can't compl- like if anyone's struggling out there and wants recovery like i'd recommend it to anyone even i'd recommend it to people that aren't even ad- addicts you know <laughs> like because it is gives me a whole new way of life so, yeah, that's a bit about me, really. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, so I want to I want to just touch back on some of the things that you yeah, talked yeah, about. Cool. Um, so you 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 tore your ACL, right? Mm-hmm. And you never thought like you, you never tried to like rehab it or fix it. You just thought that was it. You were done. I was told I'd never play again. I was told really? by, yeah, even, and still now, I went out for a two mile run this morning. And I still get active, like running. It's just, yeah, never repaired fully and it's still quite weak. Yeah. And I've tried doing yeah, rehab. I, thought, and, I mean, maybe, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I athletes come back from torn ACLs, MCLs, you know, yeah, the whole thing. I mean, yeah they do. But, I was just talking, literally, I was just, that was it. But I've never, I've tried all the physio and I've, I've still have physio now and it was never yeah. be a hundred percent. Um, yeah. And I Unless think it's more modern. You have to have surgery though, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I had six hours surgery to have that done. Mm. They messed it up the first time. That probably didn't help. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, that's probably, yeah, it's probably not a good sign. No. Um, yeah. And it's you know it is i look back now and you know is what it is powerless over it and i can't change it you know if i had it my way i would have carried on playing football but you know and um, you know life's that's what i it's what god had planned for me so true um also like when you first started doing cocaine I, I, because mm-hmm. in the UK, the UK is is huge for cocaine, and it, uh, yeah. it to me, from what I hear from the stories of of other people that I've interviewed, um, is that it's just very casual. It's very recreational. It's you know, out on every you, club. You, it's it's it's, it's kind of like cocaine. like a dr- it's, yeah, it's like a drink. It's like having a drink. It's like having a beer. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's really you, get cocaine, you can get cocaine quicker than you get a doctor's appointment over here. <laughs> that's true 
Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. Right. It is so true. And it's, but it is, you go like, you go, even now you go into places and it's just like, yeah. Like, I see someone on TikTok the other day and they go around doing toilet, like filming toilets that are good for cocaine use. Like, really? What an earth. Yeah. And I saw it on a, it was on a, um, oh, I didn't believe it at first. I saw it on a series and this girl goes around and she's like an influencer of the uh, best toilets in London to use cocaine. And I'm like, wow, what is this world coming to? Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is, but, yeah, it is quite, it's quite the, it's quite the popular drug over here. It's, it's like the, the drug of choice. And I'm, I know, you know, I've talked to loads of people about it and it's, it is, it seems like, it's very innocent. It comes off very innocent. Like when it starts, like you were just out with the lads, like going out to the clubs, probably just, you know, yeah. a bump here or there. So did, did you ever realize, like, did you, did you have a moment where you, you saw it turn where it just, you knew that it's not just having a, having a bump with some friends while you're out, like it turned. Yeah. I, well, to me, yeah, I knew when like, and I was using it at yeah. home and yeah. i was like i was getting it and then doing it before i went out and then i was like oh alone, lads i'm not coming by tonight. yourself yeah and then i'm not coming out tonight because i'll be too paranoid and too like i'll go into like hallucinations and paranoia and like thinking things were following me and oh it just got and i was like yeah no i'm not going and then it wouldn't even i stopped going out and i'll just sit at home doing finish work yeah. sit in my room do it sit up all night go to work and do the same again and it did you, happened very you work, did you did you use while you were working like what kind of job yeah. did you do that, what kind of job i was a deliver, um, i was delivering um bathrooms um okay um yeah i was driving um yeah i know it's terrific and no, I mean, it, it's just, you know, it's addiction, you know, it's addiction. Yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, I can't tell you how yeah. many times I drove a car drunk. I mean, I, I like, and not yeah. like drunk, like super drunk, like not operating a motor vehicle at all. Cool. You shouldn't no. even, I probably wasn't even like conscious. Like my mind wasn't there, but like I was yeah. driving a car. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's hard. It's, it is terrible. The, the things that you do That's when you're in that. Right. And that's why, like, what I love about recovery, you know, you can say that to an, an addict and they laugh, but you say it to any other normal member of society and they think you're the worst person on earth, you know, because ad it's yeah, only addicts and the understand addicts, like. See but, see, but I see that as people are full of shit. That's full of shit. People that go, oh, I can't believe you drive a car drunk. Fuck off. I guarantee most of those people have driven a yeah. car while under the influence. And then they just yeah. they just yeah. don't want to be they want to be all like, oh, holier than thou. Yeah. Like I've never do something like that. You have how dare you? No, you have. <laughs> but you'll look at somebody else and you'll go, Oh, can't believe you do that. Yeah. No. I know you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't believe that for one second because <laughs> just the way the world is, just the way the culture is. I mean uh yeah it's just it's just one of those things that i just i i don't think that but well, people that do that or say that i'm exactly. sure operated a motor vehicle. yeah nobody likes to say oh yeah i've driven a car really drunk before yeah. um so you 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 got kicked out of this house yeah and then you found you you relapse basically again how much clean time did you have before you relapsed then? I had just over 90 days. Okay. So not too long, early into recovery. Very early into recovery, yeah. Um, mm. And it was my kind of my first time in recovery as well. And it was like, I wanted it, but I didn't want it 100%. You know, it was like a, it was like a trial run. And I thought, oh, if I relapse, then I'll at least I can say I gave it a go. Like it was just one of them. Um, yeah. And if it wasn't for my key worker, I don't know what would have happened after that relapse. If she didn't tell me to get that convention the next day, um, 
yeah, I was. It was already like because I'd hit that fuck it button, and as soon as yeah, I took, you took were off the races. Yeah, yeah, I was game on now. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm so grateful I didn't, and I uh, did get clean again. So you have what nine months now? You said. Yeah, How was the nine months been on recovery. Do you know, it's been, it's just gone from strength to strength, but I've had a lot of bad days, but mm -hmm. over the time, it's every day that passes, things do get a little bit easier, like feelings and emotions is a big one for me. Um, I really still struggle. Well, I don't really struggle with dealing with them. I, just, I struggle with identifying what, how I'm feeling. So I don't know mm -hmm. that. I get a feeling and I'm like, I don't know if it's anger. I don't know if it's sadness or, you know, it's trying to put it, kind of categorize it. So I kind of get a feeling and I'm like, Oh, I don't like that. I don't like how that, that made me feel. And I mm. try explaining it to her about it. And it's so difficult because I, I just struggle with feelings yeah. and being able to identify. And I think that I kind of still get like today, I woke up full of anxiety. Well, I don't even know if it was anxiety, but I just had this feeling that I just did not like. And I was like, right, I need to get out. I need to get out. And I went out on a run. I went and dumped my head in a, like an ice bath. And I was yeah. like, and I was all right. And I was like, what is that? Like, it's just, it's just weird. I still can't get my head and I don't think I ever will. But I, I hope I, I do. I think at some, at some point you will be better to understand it I, it's just like one mm. of those things like because now you're dealing with all the stuff that you numbed away you know yeah you escaped from so you, you're you're dealing with like everything that life has to throw at you and then you have to kind of like process i struggle i'm 12 years sober and i still struggle like mm. processing shit if i have too much stuff going on i really yeah. struggle with dealing with it all of it Definitely. and then i I just and then I just shut off. I just get very like the quiet. I don't I don't mm. know what to do. I have to go out for a run and, and get my mind going. And so like, mm. yeah, I have to do those kind of things because it helps me to clear my head, mm. to be able to process information, mm. to, to do it all. But yeah, mm. it, it is one of those things that you'll constantly yeah. like you'll recognize it more the further you get into recovery. Mm. You'll recognize these moments where you're like, ah. Okay, I'm feeling that. But I mean, in the worst four, you know, like my head's obviously coming into recovery. I haven't got that. Don't have to worry compulsively lying. You know, I'm not having to backtrack all my stories. So my head's a lot quieter now. But I can yeah. create situations in my head just to have something mm. to stress. Just because I'm, I love, I love chaos. So I create a situation, and I'm like, I get myself sometimes so worked up over it. And then I have to take, I take a step back. I'm like, you're worrying over about something that ain't even there. Like, yeah, I've just created this thing in my head. Just, I, but I suppose it's going from like chaos. A, a, yeah. Do you think that's like an elastic effect from the, the, the cocaine use maybe? Like, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I love chaos. Um, I'm getting better at it, but like a lot when something's going on, I'm like, right. When to say, like, I had a family event event the other week, and I was like, right, mum, you do that, dad, you do that, and my mum's like, Sam, you're not in charge. Like, just chill out. We're just gonna just go with the flow. I was like, no, this has got to be done. This has got to be done. And she was like, chill out. <laughs> just like, but I just love a bit of chaos in my life now. <laughs> so what uh let's let's talk about let's talk, talk about TikTok. what made you decide to take your recovery journey on a, on a public platform to be very exposed because so the reason for me doing that to going on TikTok was not only to help the newcomer but to help other recovering addicts but also more importantly to help myself because i love talking and you know also when i first come into well i never never heard of recovery when i was using 
And mm-hmm. even in the weekend of my using, no one kind of mentioned any recovery. So, or kind of any kind of channels that I could go down to maybe get some help with my active addiction. And mm-hmm. I just, that's all I try and do now. I just try and raise awareness because I know there's people out there that are probably thinking exactly the same thing that I was, that there was no help and like settled to be a drug addict, you know, because um, that's what I settled for. Uh, I thought this yeah. is my life now. And, you know, how far, how wrong was I? And that's why I do it because I can only keep what I have by giving it away. And, um, you know, like I get a lot of people reaching out to me and I absolutely love helping people, you know. And I, like there's one guy that he was only about three weeks ago reached out. He's like, I can't stop using. And he's three weeks clean now. And he thanks me, messaged me every morning and thanks me. And, you know, that means so much to me. Because not only am I able to recover, he's able to recover too. And um, he's yeah. going to get what I'm, I'm getting, you know. And he's absolutely loving yeah. life. And he's even said he's got, he's seen his daughter now for the first time that he hasn't seen in a few years. Now he's clean. Like, and then the lot, like, I think that's just that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. You know, yeah. changes people's that's, lives. That's, and that's what I yeah. love. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's so much that we can give back. Um, mm-hmm. I have the same thing with people. You know, I've had a couple of people message me about different things. And uh, I have a friend in a, in the States and he's was worried about his drinking. And, you know, he said, you know, what do I do? And I was like, well, you know, it's up to you. Yeah. You have to decide that you have to decide that you want to do it. First of all, mm-hmm. I, said, I can only I can only say that I'll be here to support you. But like. Mm-hmm you have to make the steps and he's um he just messaged me a couple days ago he's he's got um seven days so god seven days Mm -hmm. sober and i was like you know i was like you know listen man just reach out whenever you need help i'll be here just Mm -hmm. shoot me a message um but yeah i mean that's what it's about for me as well is is to be able to connect with people to help somebody else um yeah so so we've set up quite a lot of like whatsapp groups and things like that as well so we've got like a male one we've got a female one which my partner's in um mm-hmm. and you know just daily check-ins with people you know just yeah. like and we've got a lot of people in these groups that are very early days within the first 30 days so you know it's like white nut knuckling it all the time yeah but just yeah reaching out in the morning kind of just t- send a message out in the afternoon how's everyone's day going it's just that engagement and they're like mm-hmm. they actually feel oh well, he's actually interested in me or you know and um, yeah it's so nice to just see like and when people are struggling you know they find it easy to reach out because it's all in my like mine it's all men so you see one person struggling then it might encourage another couple of others to reach out as well yeah yeah because it's a man's persona isn't it you know don't want to see like fail and don't want to look weak and you know men still have mental health we all struggle yeah you know our mental health is important men's mental health is important we're just you know told to get on with stuff really and not really deal with the emotions that you're going through or the feelings yeah. that you have inside or, or whatever, you know, like you said, like, you know, there's traumatic events that happen in your life that sometimes take years and years to process. And sometimes they never get resolved because you don't know how to mm-hmm. process it all really. No, not at so, all. Um, so no, I just, I, I just completely blanked it. My head just went blank there. I was just going <laughs> to ask about, uh, <laughs> I hate when that happens. Um, so you're doing the TikTok thing. Yeah. Um, you got a lot of engagement going on there. You got like a pretty good group of followers and things like that that you uh, yeah, so interact I've, with. Yeah, so I've got over a thousand followers. Um, I try to post regular content, like daily content. And yeah. uh, I try and do a live and I'm trying to now, I'm going to start kind of getting people on to do their share their experience strength and hope um, yeah so 
kind of a bit like this as well, you know. But it's all yeah. It's just all like helps other people as well, you know. And I find that there's a mass there is a massive recovery following on TikTok, you know. So the more yeah. we the more people we can get on board and the more people that we can shit like spread the message of recovery, you know, the better. Well, I know what I wanted to ask. What do do you feel like the UK lacks in treatment for addiction? Uh do you feel like it doesn't do enough for people that are struggling with addiction and mental health and all that kind of stuff? Because yeah, I have a different um, view because I'm from America and I see a different system and I see. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, there, the thing with addiction and I know a lot of people from meeting people in recovery, when they've, people have seeked help, through a jet like the their doctor or yeah come to the hospital they're just given medication and then but you're giving that to an addict right so it doesn't matter what drug they take they just yeah. become addicted to it. so you're not actually curing the problem you're just replacing one thing for another or just doubling up what they're using anyway and um yeah. you know a, a good friend of mine he's had to come off a huge huge detox like horrific they've he was a heroin addict he was all he took anything and anything and he'd do it and he went to the gp they gave him valium they gave him pre gabalins they've given him oxycontins they've given him like stack and stacks and stacks of prescriptive medication well, well would they give him oxy if he was a heroin addict, he's just going to get addicted to oxy. Yeah, and dies of pounds, and like it just, it just, it's just replacing that one thing with another. And uh, he's had to do a huge detox, and he's actually now got a date for detox, and uh, he's got to be supervised off his lot on his last on Subitex. So, um, yeah, it's just there is definitely not enough help. But once you find like the problem. I feel like there is enough in just, doing meetings with the BAA, CA, NA. Yeah. You know, there's not that way, but through the health system. No. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm just like, because I've seen like other like TikTokers and, and other people like being like, you know, like people go in and ask for help and they just be like, well, when was the last time you used? And they're like, oh, I got a, I got like, five days clean and they're like well it, it would it would be better if you would go and use and then come back like do you know what i mean like it, it, you'd have a better chance of getting services if you yeah. used reasons exactly. like how the how the fuck is that helping people in recovery like it's to tell them that they're use. better off that if you go use and then come oh, back, we could maybe me. help you yeah it's just crazy, you know. It's like you say that five, oh, I've got five days clean, but my doctor told me to go out and use again, so I had a big user, you know. Like, yeah, but what that's crazy. Like, and the, the problem is, I think a lot of it's like overdoses as well, you know. That can people go in and they say, like, that happens. People go out there and tell you to use again, and they go over and OD, you know, like, yeah. It's crazy. Or, it's absolutely. But you're you're going in to ask for help because you've gotten a couple of days sober, right? And you want to keep keep being sober. Keep going. And then the person at the desk tells you to go out and fucking use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. You know, that is absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah, I had a friend, and uh, he went into a service and asked for um, like the methadone, and. Um, they said, when was the last time you used heroin? And he was like, three days ago. And they were like, well, you haven't got it in your system now. He was like, well, I definitely will because I use it all the time. And they were like, but he's like, I've got three days clean. And they were like, well, we can't give you methadone if you haven't taken it in the last three days. And I was like, what? Well, so <laughs> basically go out and show up on heroin and then they'll give you the methadone. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's exactly. the message they're sending. How is yeah. that helpful? How is that helping? Yeah, exactly. Because the next time he does heroin, he could die. Yeah. So, exactly. 
and he was there asking for help with three days sober. Mm -hmm. So that's it's terrible, crazy. It's shocking. It's crazy. But um, go. And also, do you feel like in the like your view on a recovery community? Um, is that why you've gone to like online stuff? Because you feel like there's more community there than there is like where you're um, located. Yeah, no, there is quite a big recovery lot. I'm just outside of Brighton. Um, so Brighton being a city, it's it's there is a lot of recovery there. Um, but I find I you know, TikTok helps me more than really doing yeah really helps me and i love it like it's just bizarre like and i think it's more of a kind of maybe a comfort thing i can do it all from my own sofa <laughs> um and but also it is engaging with a lot of people so it's not like i'm isolating and doing it you know i'm actually doing live, i'm doing talking to other people i'm helping people i'm on the phone so yeah it's I don't get. I do still go to two meetings a week, and they're mm. my regular home meetings. And you know, I was I've been there every, been to there every week since I come into recovery. So um, I wouldn't never drop them out. But some say I could up my meetings. But you know, I do my two home groups, and um, I do this as well. And do you know what? My re recovery life's great and yeah and you I have to do not. what works for you i mean there's i mean people exactly. can say what they want about like whatever but if it's working for you right now you know just do what works for you i mean that's it that's mm. the key if it's exactly. working i mean if it gets you to know? be like if you have more bad days and good days then maybe think about something else but you know yeah. if you're doing well and things are going well then yeah, yeah keep doing what you're doing exactly. um Do you have any advice for people who are looking to get sober or that have just have a couple days in sobriety? Mm -hmm. Is there any advice you would give somebody? Um, so keep keep smashing it if you're early days in recovery or if you're struggling to stop using, you know, um, break, break it down, you know, give yourself, don't give yourself two like, unrealistic goals, you know, break it, do it one day at a time and um also like you can't if you can't stop using you know get yourself to a meeting or reach out to people or go social media there's a lot of recovery on there um and um sorry man. uh god i've completely got off my trail of thought then um oh where's it going struggling um so yeah i just kind of re reach out stay connected at all times um don't isolate you know don't keep yourself to yourself you know there's people out here that can help you and um you know just yeah keep it in the day it's you know all we have to do is wake up one morning and get our head down that pillow clean and um you know, you could whatever it takes to get get to a meeting. Um, we've got AACA, NA. You know, over here we've got the recovery journey, and which is it's different. It's like a lot, not a twelve step program, um, uh -huh. but it's recovery it works, it saves lives, and um, yeah. If anyone's kind of got in, any information regarding twelve step fellowship, it's what I do. And uh, I'll fully recommend it to anyone. Um, so, yeah. You said you live outside of Brighton. Where about mm -hmm. outside of Brighton do you live? Uh, Shoreham. We, where is it? Shoreham. Shoreham. Yeah, Shoreham. I'm from Crawley. So I live in Crawley. So we're not too far from each other. No, well, because <laughs> Crawley is where I've done all my using. Well, that makes sense. That is mad. I've got a ten-year ban from Crawley. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I got. I, yeah. I got caught with a ten-year ban. You're banned yeah. from Crawley. You can't ever come here. 
I can't can't go back to Crawley. My parents live in Horsham, so um, oh, that's the only way. I, yeah, yeah I so yeah, literally. So yeah, I, you lived in Crawley for eight years and had a good use up round there and robbed a lot of people and oh, robbed for a lot of shots and yeah. So that's why I'm not allowed back there for ten years. <laughs> But not a bad thing, really. No, yeah. Well, I mean, probably being away from there has given you a lot of uh, chance to yes, grow and expand. Definitely, yeah. definitely. But also, the only I kind of engage with a lot of people back there and try and get them into recovery now. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. It's a small world. Nice. What are you? What are your plans for the future with your recovery? Do you have any plans? Do you have anything that you you? Uh, I, aim to achieve like so um i want to kind of go back into football uh coaching and uh yeah i'm gonna start taking my football badges but i've just started my boy he's four he's just started football so trying to get him into it now and take him on his journey like my dad did with me um going on holidays you know doing all the things like i haven't got massive goals but I just want to have like a a nice life, easy yeah. life. I also want to go back into the service. I want to give back. So I want to give back, go back into working in maybe with it. I don't know if you know CGL. You've heard of that over here? CGL. That's, that does sound familiar. Yeah. Change, grow, live it's called. Yes. Um, I, I, I applied for jobs there when I uh, yeah. moved over here. So, um, yeah, I'll kind of want to kind of, kind of feedback, go back in there, do a bit of work. I've done a bit of voluntary work already. Um, yeah. So I want to jump, do a, like a peer mentoring program. And um, yeah, kind of maybe like key work some people. And But yeah, I swear I want to kind of go, go give back now, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so before we close out the show, I like to ask, uh, my guest, what are three things that you need in your recovery? So, you know, it could be journaling, you know, running yoga, just whatever. Mm -hmm. What are three things that are like your top three things you need it? You wake up, you need it. You have to have it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I need to have my program that I have to work on a daily basis. Um, one my, med my meditation Two. and i'm going to say nature because right. get out a lot. i like to get out and being outside is you know fresh air does me the world of good and i like to get out for walk every day work my walk run um so yeah and it really helps change man <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, Nature is not one that I've had before. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one to be outside the fresh air. Yeah, yeah, that is a good and one. And down in on the coast, it's nice and uh, sea breeze. <laughs> oh man, I bet. Yeah, no, I always like going down to the seaside. It's always a nice, yeah. uh, nice time. Refreshing. Yeah, no, nice. Well, I mean, except when it's raining and windy. I uh, know I've been <laughs> in Brighton a couple times, and it's been miserable yeah when it's raining it's proper miserable yeah um well sam honestly man i appreciate you coming on the podcast thank you for coming thank on um if you have any social media anything that you'd like to shout out uh you can shout it out shout it out and let everybody know where they can find you i'm on on tiktok sam's recovery journey give me a follow give me a like if anyone's struggling um don't hesitate reach out and i'll always get back to you my inbox is always open and uh, if anyone wants any help with any recovery anything to do with recovery or any fellowship don't hesitate to reach out i'll be more than happy to help you and signpost you in the right direction nice all right sam thank you so much for coming on the podcast mm -hmm. and uh yeah man uh, congrats on your journey and your sobriety and just keep smashing it. Keep doing the TikToks. Let people know that recovery is great. Yes, that's it. Take care. Thank you very much, mate.